Hey, Elisa. Yeah. Elisa. What? Elisa. What? Elisa. What? Elisa. No. <laughs> Guess what movie we're talking about today. Oh, you're just gloating because <laughs> yours got picked. So you're we all. We still got one more. Money. We still got one more. I know. It's so. probably going to be yours. No, It'll probably be know. two for two. Yeah, well, it might be. I don't be. know. I don't know. Maybe. Okay, we'll so let's announce your pick. <laughs> so. I'm going to start off with a story. So the year was 2006. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and so we are talking about Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. And this is one of, uh, this is my pick for uh, for this know. entry. <laughs> Obviously. I'm going to edit that out now. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. And so, um, as you can tell, I am so fucking stoked to talk about a slasher for, for once. Lisa giving me the eye oh, roll. Oh, come on. <laughs> so I take it you're not a fan of this no, movie? No, I am. I am. A f- Actually, you would be delighted because I did like this movie. I saw it when it first came out. Mm-hmm. It was on, back then, Netflix was doing like the DVD. Th- I mean, you still can do the DVDs, but it was strictly just DVDs back then. Yeah. So I did, I was like, oh, this sounds really interesting. So I did see it when it first came out. And I was like, oh, this is fun. Like, But then I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was kind of one of those like... It was it, it was such an interesting concept, so that's what attracted me to it, and it was different. But then, like years go by, and I was, like I wouldn't really talk about it that much. And then I was like, oh okay. And then rewatching, I'm like, oh, I remember this. Like I remember the scene. And well, and see, that's the perfect example, though. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, like I don't really hear. Back, you don't hear, yeah. I mean, I do now with the tenth anniversary. Uh, that just passed, and they had a screening down in L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was the Egyptian or... Egyptian Theater. I think it was the Egyptian Theater. Mm-hmm. They had a screening down there for, to celebrate the 10-year anniversary, and then they announced that they're going to be releasing a Blu-ray for Screen Factory. I also heard they're doing a sequel. Which uh, also true? got announced. And With the same guy? Yeah. Nathan wow. Beasel, Scott Wasserman, Angela Gothis, uh, all returning. I wonder why it took so long. Well, here's the thing. So, in 2006, this movie happened to come under right at... Well, this had the unfortunate uh, circumstance of coming right after Hatchet. Oh, so, because, see, I feel like Hatchet got so much notoriety. Uh, Hatchet got a lot of notoriety and a lot of shine. Mm -hmm. It it was an indie darling for a while. Still is, too. You know what I mean? And, like, because it was DIY filmmaking. And Adam Green, you know, captured the old school essence of a slasher movie. But I didn't love Hatchet. I, I, I love Hatchet. I think Hatchet's a Maybe really I have good to movie. revisit it because I don't remember loving it. I, I would have to watch it again. I would actually pick Behind the Mask over Hatchet. I, I, I would I'd definitely pick Behind the Mask yeah. over Hatchet too. Um, just because... Okay, so, so... So Hatchet and Behind the Mask came out at the same time, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate. 2006. Yeah, and Hatchet was on a roll because they were doing festivals yeah. they were doing the myspace campaign oh, that's right, back MySpace. when myspace was a thing yeah and then they had then they started a group on facebook the hatchet army mm-hmm. hatch on twitter hatchet army behind the mask kind of kind of got lost in the shuffle and there were it was at some festivals and people loved it mm-hmm. behind the mask got way more better reviews than, than hatchet, hatchet. And I'm right wondering now, if it's because Hatchet upped up their social media so much. Maybe Behind the Mask didn't do that. Yeah, probably. Could have been. Yeah, most, most definitely could have been. Because I remember seeing that movie, Hatchet, online a lot more. I, me too. And in magazines too, like Pandoria yeah. and all beca- that. And then the, the thing that's another thing that helped it too, because Hatchet had the gore and the blood. That's true. And on top of that, it had Kane Harder, yeah. which elevated it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but Kane Hodder makes an appearance in, in Behind, Behind the, mask. the Mask. Yeah. And so this movie comes out on the heels of that. Mm-hmm. And this movie kind of gets lost in the shuffle. And it's sad because I do feel like this is... It's not... So off the bat, this is not a typical slasher movie at No, all. this is... Like, I, I said this on our Instagram, and it's in my opinion, that I think that this is one of the most clever slasher movies ever made. Yeah. And this... Even though it's a small movie, its ideas is are ambitious as a motherfucker. And you could tell this is a film for horror fans, yeah. like for fans of slasher, because under- it's not it. 
it isn't such a it's not it's a funny movie it's hilarious like it, yeah. to me it's not it's like a dark comedy it's not the status like scary movie like goofy scary like yeah. goofy cheesy this isn't cheesy this is like it's smartly written but it's it is for fans who can predict oh she's gonna fall there and then cue the kill like it's very smart in how it lays everything out I yeah think. and then on top of that he even shows you yeah how he's gonna do it and he even tells you yeah in the movie he tells you this is what's gonna happen it's like a darker version of uh or it's it's a it's a funnier version of henry oh okay you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah, because yeah, henry yeah, yeah. portrait of a serial killer you know like what he's gonna do and everything but this one takes it up like on a comedy level yeah. But there is a dark side to it. And so this movie, it, like, I absolutely love this movie. When I saw this movie back, I didn't see this movie for four years. Oh, wow. So you didn't see when it first came out? I didn't see when it first came out because it was hard to find. It was. It I was could not find this find. fucking movie anywhere. And this mm-hmm. is before I had, like, you know, money yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a credit card. And I didn't know where I could find this fucking movie. And they didn't, because there was still video stores at that time. There were, but they, they, they didn't, didn't have it. They didn't have it. it. So Netflix DVD was the only one that I didn't had have it. Netflix at the time. You know, I didn't yeah. even know about Netflix at mm-hmm. that time. You know, I was still buying DVDs yeah. at Streetlight. And so I'm just <laughs> like, and so I'm just like trying to find this fucking movie. And then mm-hmm. like after a while, I kind of forgot about it. And then I remember reading an article on Bloody Disgusting as uh, the 10 underappreciated horror movies. Yeah. And this was number three. Right behind a movie you hate, All the Boys Love Andy Lane. I don't hate. I I just think it's overrated. Okay, well, it's underappreciated, <laughs> none of the lace. And so, <laughs> and I read the article and I was reading his review and he was talking about this is a movie mm-hmm. for slasher fans that yes. that you need to see this. Yeah. This is what a slasher is. Mm-hmm. And so you need to see this. And, and the way that, you know, they broke it down in the article and I was reading it, like, fuck, I want to see this fucking movie. Yeah. Where can I find it? Mm-hmm. I Googled it. I tried to find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And so... So how did you find it? How did you end up watching it? So fast forward 10 years, like four years. Mm-hmm. So 2010. Okay. Um, I'm just getting off work and I'm waiting for the bus. I got time to kill. I got a couple. I got. I got some money, so I'm like, you know, I'll go to Borders for a little bit and oh, see. Oh, I what miss I got. Borders. Right? They don't have Borders anymore. No, they all closed. No. And so I went. I went to Borders, and I was like, huh. All right. So I just walked around, and I went into the DVD section, trying to look for something. And I went into the horror section. They had a really good horror section. They in there. did. They Borders they, did have a good horror. Yeah, section. Yeah. And so I was like, oh man, there's some really good shit in here. And then I see behind. I just see the word behind. I was like. Is that Snatch. it? Is that it? <laughs> I, I pick it up because I've been fooled before. Mm-hmm. And then I picked it up. I was like, <gasps> and I see the fucking the mask, face yeah. and I see the names. Like, oh my God. Yes. So you, you bought I it then? I fucking bought it right wow. then. And That's then. a risk. Taking a risk to buy a movie before you've seen it. Yeah. And so I was like, I gotta buy this movie. I, yeah. I need to see this. Because I already bought Hatchet at that time. Mm-hmm. I bought Hatchet as soon as it came out. Mm-hmm. When Hatchet came out, I bought that and I showed. All my friends that movie. Mm-hmm. And they all loved it. They're like, oh, this is pretty good. And so, I bought Behind the Mask. Mm-hmm. I went home that night. Got a pizza. Got some beer. Sat in my living room. Turned all the lights off. Nice. And watched it. And I was completely fucking blown away. Like, I honestly, at that point in time... So let me give you some context. At that point in time in the 2000s, from 2000 on to like 2008, mm-hmm. 9, I wasn't in the horror movies anymore. I, oh, I, really? I stopped watching movies because I was tired of the PG-13. Yeah. I was tired of the remakes. I was tired of all that shit. I was yeah. tired of watching like, you know, like the remake The Prom Night, you know, oh the Stepfather God, so remake. Bad. You know, so bad. It's, it, to me, like, shit like that... That's just, when it really escalated, Yeah, too. to me, yeah. That, that's what really turned me off to horror. And yeah. so I stopped watching horror movies for a while. And then I just kind of... And after a while, I kind of discovered, like... Uh, that's when I discovered uh, other movies, mm-hmm. like, from other countries. That's when I discovered Frontiers, mm-hmm. Inside. That's when I discovered New Age Sensitive Killer. That's when mm-hmm. I discovered uh, Made in Britain. That's when I discovered all these different filmmakers and all these different films. Yeah. And I was on, like, an indie kick for about... 
Six years. Because in America, we just had, like, except this, well, The Strangers is technically a remake of them, but it's so different in my opinion. Yeah. But in America, yeah, at the time, we didn't really have a lot of originality. Everything was being remade. Yeah, and so, like, you know, I would go to, like, Blockbuster and rent these, like, mm-hmm. these awful long movies and just, like, these are pretty cool. And so mm-hmm. I stopped watching horror for a good few years until mm-hmm. 2007 mm-hmm. when all of a sudden I see Frontiers. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm looking at this wrong. I should, I should dig deeper. Yeah. And that's when I discovered the classics and that's when I started digging into it more. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm just, okay. And then uh, that's when I kind of upped my slasher game and I'm just thinking about it. And then I saw behind the mask. Mm -hmm. I was fucking blown away. It, Mm -hmm. it, I don't want to say it changed my life, but it. It really kind of did. It, wow. Like, the way I the way I looked at it and the way they did it and wrote it and the way they delivered it, they delivered it in a smart way where it never pandered to its audience. Mm-hmm. They did it in a way where it's like, look, these are the rules, and the people that you idolize, like Kruger, Voorhees, Chucky, Pinhead, Candyman. They're real people. Yeah, I know. That's, They're that real was fucking people. That was neat to see. And then even in the beginning, there's so much um, tribute to those movies. Because yeah. if you watch the interviewer in the beginning, she's standing under where it says the rabbit in red lounge. Yeah. The rabbit in red <laughs> is from Halloween. And then you see the Freddy house and who lives there, it's Kane Hodder. <laughs> and Robert England's in this movie. Yeah. So it, Which it is, is a nice touch. It's a nice touch. Yeah, I wish he was in it more. I'll get into that. But... It is such a it is a movie for horror fans, mm-hmm. and like I said, it's not cheesy to the point like scary movie comedy cheesy. It is very funny though. It's a fucking hilarious movie because you're seeing it from the killer's point, point of view. view. He's yeah. giving everything away, but he's like funny about things, you know. And um, can we just talk about how fucking great Nathan Beasley was? Great. In his... I wish he was. He in was... Horror... You know what he kind of reminds me of in this? What? I don't know. What it, I mean, he's lost his hair since then, so he's kind of bald now. But yeah. in the movie, something about his face reminds me of Ethan Hawke. And I don't know yeah, what it is. Yeah, the jawline. Oh, it's like the is, goatee, totally like something to like Ethan Hawke-ish going on. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that strong jawline. And the eyes, maybe the eyebrows or something. Yeah. So, you know, his performance. He was great. If he, if Leslie was not as charming, I honestly feel like this movie wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. They needed They, they needed, needed someone they needed that to was it, yeah. really charismatic and mm-hmm. someone that really owned the screen because if he was too serious it wouldn't have worked no it, it wouldn't because yeah. if you would have placed like fuck if you would have placed anyone else yeah that that was just not as good mm-hmm. as nathan it just didn't have that natural it factor mm-hmm. it, this movie wouldn't have worked and he's very charismatic in this. and he's just very likable yeah and he's, he's a doing, likable killer <laughs> and he's doing despicable things and yet you and at toward the end when like they realize this is for real right it's like shit. Yeah, it takes a different turn. And then, because that third act, it really does take a turn, and it then it's changes like changes the content. For yeah, sure. and it's like, oh shit, we're this isn't this isn't fake anymore. This is real. This, like they're now, really in this. Yeah. Like oh shit, and now you're now you're stuck because like you're trying to figure out, well, should I keep rooting for him or should I or for the crew <laughs> or for the crew that's just trying to stop him? Yeah. And this had a very interesting twist. Yeah. And I think the twist gets lost on people. I liked the twist. I'm glad they did the twist. And because I, if they didn't, it would have kind of fell flat a little bit. Yeah. And but I, no, it took a completely different turn. Like, he knew the whole time who his girl was, who his yeah. final girl was. And I honestly loved that. Mm-hmm. And I thought that, and I, when I first, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God. And, he's, and, I, and then when he says, Taylor, it was always you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa. I know. I was cracking up because when he first uh, takes them into like his, is he in a van, right? He's like in a van or something. Yeah, yeah. And he's taking them and he's like spying on this one high school group. And then like, it's not the girl Kelly, but it's another girl that he shows. And it's like, oh, did you feel that? She knew I was there. Or like, I don't know. Like that whole scene was just hilarious. Like, Oh, there's a deleted scene. It's fucking hilarious. And I wish they kept it in what too. What was it? So uh, right after that, so... There's a scene where Leslie takes the group to a high school. Yeah. And he breaks down and says, look, what we do, we don't... He, so he basically says, we don't wake up and fantasize about a girl and obsess about her all yeah. the time. And then the then Taylor, the journalist, says, well, that seems to happen a lot with you guys. Yeah. Like, no, that's not what happens. You yeah. just need a girl that, you know, that can tie people together. So you see those jocks right there? Yeah. That's your bread and butter. Yeah. Nice libidos, good looking, 
They're the ones that's going to bring the people in. Yeah. You see those kids over there, the stoners, they don't move quite as fast, <laughs> but they're good to pageant numbers. Yeah. And then you see those guys over there, the geeky ones. Yeah. Well, they're expendable, believe me. And then he's all, mm-hmm. so you just need a girl that will tie them all together. Who's that a virgin. All, yeah, who happens to be a virgin. Mm-hmm. And then so there's a girl in a purple dress walks right right by the Elm Street kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're in the ropes. Yeah, the white and, outfits. Yeah, and so she walks and then she senses something. Yeah, that's she team. looks. She yeah. looks at him and is like, and Leslie's like, oh, did you get that? Did you get that? Yeah, and she like, sensed I was there or something. Yeah, and he's like, did you, did you feel that? Like how we sensed each other? Yeah. Like, and then to me, like, I think about like, like horror movies. I, I thought about that scene with Halloween. Yeah. Where Michael Myers yeah. is outside of the window and he's mm-hmm. looking at Laurie Strode and then she senses it. She looks and then looks away and then looks back and he's gone. Mm-hmm. And I just keep thinking like, fuck, that's it's like, so this true. is the behind the scenes look of what happens the, in that moment. It literally is behind the scenes. And yeah. so, and so right after that, he's all, well, how do you know that? It's like, well, she's a virgin. Like, how do you know? Like, I just know. I it's just like, know. <laughs> and so in the deleted scene, the crew goes up to her at her house. Oh, shit. And they're, just, they're like, oh, excuse me, we want to ask you something about, like, sex ed or something like that. Blah, blah, blah. So, and then she's trying, and Taylor's trying to ask her, like, so have you ever done, like, and she's, like, being passive aggressive about it. Mm-hmm. And then she catches on. It's like, are you trying to ask me if I'm a virgin? And then she's like, okay, cut, guys, let's go. <laughs> and they start booking. And then it's like, yeah, Leslie, you're right. She's a virgin. <laughs> wow. It's funny because I could, like, the first time I tell this, I knew that, what's the blonde girl's name? The interviewer? Taylor? Taylor. Yeah. I knew she was a virgin because at that scene where, and you could tell they had something going on. Like, you could sense something. Yeah. Because after he says that, she looks at him and then it gets kind of quiet. So I'm like, oh, she's a virgin. Like, Maybe she's going to... Like, I kind of knew, just because I'm... Oh, like, I didn't pick up on that. Because I've studied horror films so much, I'm like, there. that's something. I, I, I did pick on. up that she didn't drink. Yeah. And so when she didn't drink, I was yeah. like, oh. It's like little clues that they leave you. Yeah, and so, like, yeah. I, so there's a scene where <clears throat> they're at um, Leslie's mentor's house, Eugene. <clears throat> who is in The Walking Dead, was in The Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Yeah, yeah. And, who ha- and who is rumored to be Billy. So I was going to ask you, who was he supposed to be? So he's Billy from Black Christmas. I didn't get that reference at all. So he says, so he talks to Billy. So when, when uh, Eugene is talking to mm-hmm. Taylor and she says, you know, and then he's chopping up the carrots. Yeah. He's saying, you know, we're, we just go in, we hit about, we hit as much people we go mm-hmm. and then we vanish. Which Billy vanished. You don't know what happened to Billy. You don't. You never saw Billy. But that's all they gave you on, because I didn't feel like because was... he was there was there's more to it. But they're trying to say like he was the first slasher, and the first slasher was Black Christmas. I wish they would have had what was the girl's name in it? His wife, uh, Jamie. I wish. They and then named... she was a final girl that he didn't kill. So, but that's not Black Christmas enough because I wish they named her. Uh, shit, no, the... but she's not. She's not supposed to be from Black Christmas. She comes down later on, so she's supposed to be a future Survivor girl. I wish Eugene, she called him Billy or that. Or Eugene something. is supposed to be Billy in like those other no name slashers leading up to Halloween. Okay, and then, I didn't get that from because that. then when you got because then he says when you have like Mike and Jay and yeah. Freddy's or like. And they come back like a curse, you know, well, change the game. I obviously knew he was like an older, you know, before the Michael and stuff. So I thought he was like Ed Gein because he's chopping up and like he like kind of lives in the country. and. No, because like it's like there's evidence to support it. And there's even evidence to support that he's the toolbox killer too. Oh, the toolbox murder. I just saw the second one recently. That was terrible. Oh my was it? God. Oh uh, my God! I want. I need to see the first one. I haven't seen the first one. The original or the remake? The Tilda Hooper one. The original. The yeah. remake wasn't that bad. I will say that Angela um, B B Betis. How do you say her last name? Betis. 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 She's in it. Oh really? Wasn't in it. Cherry Moon. Rob Zombie's wife is in the beginning. It wasn't horrible. The remake. Um, but the original. I like was Angela Betis. So yeah, I love maybe. her. The original's fucked up though. But they just did a second because one not too long ago. And it was. You can get on Amazon. So there's Prime. like a toolbox like in the back of his car. Oh. And then someone okay. screenshots that scene and says, is Eugene the toolbox killer? 
And then Scar Glosserman tweets back, is like, yes. <laughs> Wait, they show that in the movie? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, it's like when he's telling Leslie to be careful at the end. There's it's a big toolbox at the on the back seat of his car. I must have like checked my phone or something. I, I need to <laughs> terrible. I know no. I I, don't, I must have got distracted oh because like I don't remember that. Terrible. But then why does he bury himself in the ground? Because he needs to keep himself sharp, and he doesn't know when he's gonna be called into action. One thing that's hilarious in this though that I always like joke about. When Leslie's giving, like, his routine, like, what he does, he goes, you know how much cardio I have to do? <laughs> and then he gives his little breakdown, like, no, I, I gotta make it look like I'm walking, but no, I'm running I'm after these yeah. guys. <laughs> that was so and then, fucking funny. And it was Holly Ash. Yeah. yeah. He's all out of breath when he's doing that. I know. That. Like, <laughs> that was so great. I kind of wish, too, there's another deleted scene where, um... He, he displays that to oh, Taylor. Oh, really? Yeah. They should have showed that. It's so... So they're, they're standing right next to each other. It's okay. And so, okay, Taylor, run toward over at the end of the, uh, the tree. So the camera is, is set up at the end. Mm-hmm. And then the other guy is like sitting over here. Mm-hmm. So they're watching him. And Taylor's running. And then he runs right after her. Oh, my God. And then when she turns, he stops and he starts walking. That's uh, hilarious. And then she turns ah! and runs again. And then he runs right after her. And she turns like, ah! And then one more time, she looks and she trips. She's, trip. like, she's got to trip, right? You yeah. have to trip. In a and way. then she's like, oh, because she wasn't looking. So yeah. she got stumped. And like, oh, shit. And he's like, see, there you go. That's hilarious. And then that's all funny because one of the camera crew guys is all like, that fucker's cheating. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but then he tells you like, hey, man, that's what I got to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, he says, I'm at a disadvantage. It's one against six. That's true. I gotta do everything I can to get a heads up. I, I, like uh, a head start. Yeah, a head yeah. start on these on these people. That's so fucking funny. And so I really love the fact that the way they break everything down. They literally do though, like everything, like the location, the students, the legend, the legend, the weapons, like setting it up, like oh they're gonna grab the first weapon that's accessible to them, so he like fucks with it. Um, but they really did think of everything. Yeah, and, yeah. and you could totally tell that this was written by someone that really loved slasher yes, movies. Yes, definitely I mean? a And fan. really someone that studied the craft and yeah. was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, when I feel like this movie did better than you know, what New Nightmare was trying to do. Mm, yeah. I because New that. Nightmare tried to do the same concept, mm-hmm. you know, by, by bringing Freddy into the real world, mm-hmm. by making him a real demon. Yeah. And someone that's possessing someone you know what i mean like i never understood that if freddie possessed robert england toward the end of the film or if he ever killed i think he did yeah because he's painting but you don't see like what he's painting because then when Nan- because then when heather lingenkamp calls him he yeah. says oh yeah me and the family were we're on vacation yeah and but he's like painting something and he's on the phone with her yeah and it's yeah. freddie and so, so I, I feel like this movie does better at what new night was trying to do and i feel yeah. the the meta humor was a little bit more on point than Scream. Well, that's what I was going to say, too. I feel like Scream fans will like this because of the rules. You know, that Jamie Kennedy, obviously, is the one that brought the rules, Mm -hmm. the three rules. So I feel like that was influenced in this a lot. And I feel like fans would would like this, too, because of that. Yeah, and, you know, the one one complaint that I always see about this movie is the third act. Because of the twist? No, not because of the twist. Because it's not as bloody as it should be. It's not well, as that's what violent. It's not as, like, it's a slasher film, but it's not a slasher film. Like, it's not gory at all. There's, like, barely any blood. Um, there's, I mean, I guess, like, the the crew when they die. There's, I mean, compared to blood. Hatchet, like, this, yeah. this film is not, doesn't go over the top with the blood and gore. It's not, yeah. You know I mean, it's very subtle. Yeah. And so, to me, I feel like, well, Like, this could have been PG-13, was yeah, it PG thirteen? No, it was radar. radar. It could have been PG thirteen easily. And so, to me, I was like, I mean, yeah, that. I mean, but then it would have not have been as charming, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. You know, because you're still supposed to like Leslie Vernon at the at, you know, at the very to, end. At the very yeah. end, you know what I mean? And I feel like if he was, and on top of that, I think he's not a fucking mangaloid. He's not someone that has super strength, so he can't like he's just human. rip someone's right. skull up. He's pure human. So he's trying to kill people mm-hmm. by you know the simplest way and easiest way mm-hmm. possible. Yeah, it, it, and that's why he reads the Great Anatomy books. Yeah, and that's what he touches on is all like you know you got to read that shit because you got to know you got to know what you're how doing. to you know you got to know where to cut. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? The one thing I, I did like the third act. I thought it would like it needed that. I again I feel like if it just was strictly like humor and it would it would have kind of like not been enough for me. So I did like they did make it darker and they they trick you like no it's the crew and it's the girl the whole time that he's after and he planned all of this. Mm-hmm. So I did like that. The one thing I will say that I did not like I didn't like his mask. I did wish oh, the, I loved his mask. Ah, I wish the mask was better. I thought the mask was great. I thought it fit. Cause I liked his overalls and stuff and like everything else and like his weapon, but I just I don't know the mask I didn't care for. No, I I liked it. I, it was too babyish it, looking. Like it looked like a baby face. I liked it because it looked like it was it looked really homemade mm. and it looked really cheap. His so I, makeup looked creepy though. Like Oh the the, the tar the Yeah, party party. that was creepy. I, I thought that was good. I, I don't know. I didn't really have a problem with his mask. I thought that I thought his mask was someone that it just wasn't creepy as, enough. I, it, I, I it's think, not iconic, you know. I think that's what you're trying to get at. I think yeah. that's. I think that's what your point is. Is that it's not iconic, like it wasn't definitive enough. Like the hockey enough. mask yeah. or, or the Myers mask. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I could see your point, but I, I didn't really. I didn't mind it really. I thought it. I thought it worked for what it was because on top of that, you got to remember he's just starting out. Yeah, that's true. You know. Another thing too, I wish they had more because Robert England is like the psychologist and he's like the Doctor Loomis. Let's be honest. I wish he was in it more. He they they kind of didn't really. They have cut him. a lot of the scenes out. They did. Yeah. So for what, time. Really. Yeah, for time. So, and, and for pacing, because a lot of the scenes were just exposition scenes, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of scenes. There's a scene where he's like in the courtroom, mm-hmm. yelling, and stuff like that. And it's also in the trailer. He's, he's in the trailer yelling at the courtroom, and I, yeah, they show him a lot in the trailer. And so it's, and then on the commentary, Glosserman, Scott Glosserman, the director, he said. I didn't like that because then it felt like a different movie. Oh, I see. Because a lot of it was like found footage mm-hmm. and then you're trying to insert Robert England into the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that work? You know what I mean? Are you going to go flashbacks and stuff like that? And he says like, it just didn't work. And like the pacing of the movie, mm-hmm. when he came into the movie, the movie stopped. So one thing I'm a little, conf- well, not confused. I just wish they added a little more on was why was he psychotic? Because he fakes that he's the the son, but he's not really the son. So why? For what the was- same reason Eugene faked being Billy. For the same reason he faked being all those other slashers. Because he wants to be a legend of his own. In fact, he knew, he knew, he knew well enough to know that Leslie Vernon died. Yeah. So he knew well enough to know, like, you know what? Like. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take up this legend. I'm going to take up this mantle Mm -hmm. and I'm going to make it mine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it was for him that he wanted to be on the level of Eugene. really, Because Eugene was his mentor. Eugene was teaching him everything that he knew. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, look, this is it. And he even watched, like, even those scenes Mm -hmm. when they're together, it's very telling because... He's walking him through it. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, don't don't get ahead of yourself yet because you need to focus, son. Mm-hmm. You know, or times like when he's sitting there, like break, giving the Taylor game on how the slashes work. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, Leslie's there. He's like Eugene's not only you know spitting games to Taylor. He's also spitting games to Leslie. Mm-hmm. And so Leslie's also learning too from that so he's like okay i gotta learn how to manipulate my my mm-hmm. victims i gotta learn how to be quick witty i gotta learn how to talk you know i gotta blend in yeah and so i feel that's what it is and i honestly think eugene is a little bit more central to the story than we think i just i need to rewatch those scenes because i i didn't get that he was black christmas at all you didn't think he was no. billy there's a lot of theory well, it's not- murders i can see but not Billy. It's not confirmed, but it there it, it is theorized that he is the first slasher and the first slasher Wasn't ever. Keeping Tom the first slasher. Well, technically, yeah. Would it be t- Peeping Tom. I thought it would be yeah. No, because everyone credits Black Christmas as the very first slasher movie. I mean, I could see that, but I thought Peeping Tom was before. Let me Google this. Hold on. I mean, Peeping Tom is an amazing movie, by the way. If no one has Wouldn't that be ironic if he was in it? <laughs> it's Peeping Tom is 1960. 1960. And it is a slasher, so Peeping Tom is the first. Yeah. 
Huh. Hmm. Well, everyone says that. I don't know. To me, I can see. I haven't seen Peeping Tom, so I can't <gasps> speak to that. That's a must. You have. It's such I a did cool hear, movie. I did hear that that movie ruined that director's career, though. But it's such a crazy, like it's such a crazy movie, and the way he kills people is insane. Okay, I'm so gonna have to. With his camera, like it's crazy. I'm gonna have to watch that. Uh, I don't know where you can watch it. It's kind of hard to find, but um, I, it's an amazing movie. It's like you have to see it. But people theorize that he is Billy from Black Christmas, hmm. and he talk he's he referenced the sorority and the frat houses and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, and then he's also references that you know you get away, you which know, he did. You get Black away Christmas. and you do another yeah. job, and mm. then you know. But technically, all the slashers, all the killers, get away. Technically. Yeah, no, but it's like, you know, he was also saying, like, you know, they get locked up, they get dead, mm. you know, just cheap. They it. get dead. <laughs> get dead. Get dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. But no, I, I mean, I just, I guess I have to rewatch it because, like, I didn't get that at all. And usually I pick up things like this, but I did not get that at all from him. Well, I, I did, like, a lot of reading on this, and, and I was trying to think about, like, fan theories and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Huh. Because... There's a lot of theories about this movie, and mm-hmm. some are plausible. Some of them, are like, ah, I don't yeah. know. But you know, the 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 Black Christmas angle is the one I definitely can see. Hmm. And then I could definitely see that you know Eugene is a slasher. You know, he's yeah, like the that, grand. He's that like I the. Could see. You know, he's like the the grandfather. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to be the grandfather slasher. And, and he's so great. It was Scott Wilson, that's his name, right? Yeah. He's so great. He was Herschel in uh, Walking Dead, and he was great in that too. Do you think he'll be in this in the uh, the sequel? Maybe. Are they doing it where it's like before? Because I kind of heard some things. Like, are they doing? Is the sequel going to be like a prequel? I don't know. Because I, I thought that's what I heard. I don't know. The uh, I did hear um, recently that they might follow the comic book. Because Leslie Vernon has actually been immortalized by comics. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and he wow. has his own comic, uh, comic book, and it's a six-part series. Hmm. And so the comic book picks up, and it has a really um, great story mm-hmm. that I think they should run with. And so at the end of Behind the Mask, he's dead, or yeah, supposedly. Supposedly. But then if you stay at the end of the credits, you see him rise up. Yeah, the more. It was a more, look, right? Yeah, yeah, and he looks at the doctor, Yeah, and then it cuts. Mm-hmm. Great song choice, by the way. Psycho <laughs> Killer. That was dope. By the Talking Heads. And Love so, it. the comic, comic book picks up about two years after the incident, mm-hmm. and no one remembers. Oh. No one remembers Leslie Vernon. No one remembers the incident at that wow, farmhouse. Wow, that's fucked up. And so... <laughs> The, the whole premise of the comic book is that, you know, he did all this stuff and yet he's trying to figure out, well, how am I not big? Yeah. How am I not a legend yet? That's how they're like, he failed. That's yeah. so fucking funny. And so that's, that's where they're going to go with it. And I okay. hope they go with that because that's an awesome storyline. That like, is cool. Because it's like, like I did all this work. And, For, and I didn't get and, nothing out of it. Yeah. And so they're actually trying to like, you know... Uh, turn reality into art because mm-hmm. when the movie came out, mm-hmm. it didn't do well. Mm-mm. It didn't sell. But now it's got such a huge following. Now, now it's got a following. Now he's doing yeah. uh, conventions, which I think is helping. Yeah. Uh, Scott Glosserman is a little bit um, on Twitter now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the movie's now on YouTube. It's on, it's on Prime. YouTube. It's on, it's on Prime Shutter. Shutter. Yeah, it used to it be. It got on re-released Netflix. on Screen Factory as yeah. a Blu-ray for the tenth anniversary. Mm-hmm. The tenth anniversary just passed, it like just a passed. few months ago. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's like okay, all these things are starting to pick up now. Yeah, because like before, like you didn't really hear it, but like the last five years, that's all I hear. Like horror fans, oh, have you seen this? And like because they finally saw it. Yeah, you know and I mean? think because this is the thing too, like access, right? It's so hard to find independent horror movies like oh if they're playing at festivals well they don't show festivals everywhere you know or they don't show them in theaters and if they are at like independent cinemas they're only in the theater for like two weeks like my friend Dahmer only playing for two weeks yeah yeah you know so it, it's so hard to um to watch but I think we're getting better at it like they're doing on-demand releases you can rent it on Amazon Prime like I think it is slowly getting easier for people to watch independent horror movies like this yeah because now that they're trying to is like they're trying to release some 
at the same time on the theaters and mm-hmm. on VOD at the same time. Yeah. Because they realized, like, you know, 1,500 screens yeah. across America that, you know, you... You could either live right next to the theater or you have to drive to the fucking theater and to I see it. And I think people are realizing not everyone's really going to movies anymore. It's kind of slowly dying a little bit. It is slowly dying, but I think it's dying because quality of movies. Yeah. Well, like I said, everything is accessible now online, so... Or it's trying to be, so it's like people don't want to pay $12 and then another $50 for popcorn at a theater when they can watch it in their living room for, like, less than 8 bucks. I prefer going to the movies. I do too. And so to me, it's like, well, you know, I've gone and I've driven to Monterey to go see the Victor Crowley showing <laughs> for the one night. Yeah. And uh, Tiffany Shapis was there and she did a Q&A. Oh, wow. And I fucking drove on a Sunday mm-hmm. to go see that at 615 because it was a one night only showing. And then the following week, it was released on VOD. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm willing to go do that because I just love this genre so much. Yeah, and you, you want and to show so, support for it. And too. so if Behind the Mask, mm-hmm. you know, was going to be showing a Monterey, yeah. I'm going. Yeah. I'm going. Plain and simple. It's yeah. just that, you know. But to me, it's like people are slowly finding this movie. It's slowly finding its audience. Mm-hmm. You know, it's more it, accessible. Yeah. I haven't been able to talk about this movie for a good fucking 10 years because wow. a lot of the people that I know, mm-hmm. I mean, I've shown this movie to a couple of my friends mm-hmm. and they liked it. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're not genre fans or nothing like that, but they enjoyed it. It's like, oh, that's pretty fucking cool. I like yeah. this better than Scream. It, it did. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, this, this did, this did what Scream was supposed to do. You know, but it took you behind, it literally took you behind the mask of the killer and showed you the breakdown. And I think that's what they appreciate about it because they understood Mm -hmm. the rules and they understood, oh, I get it now. These guys are just serial killers. They're not just actual supernatural. To be fair for Scream though, if Scream was never made, would this have been made? I don't think so. No. Scream set the bar for this. Had not New Nightmare been made, Scream would have never been made. I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, because New Nightmare set the prototype. But Kevin Williamson didn't write New Nightmare, and Kevin Williamson was like kind of his own thing back in the nineties. Yeah, like but so what? But he watched New Nightmare. Yeah, and I mean and he then, got Wes Craven to do. And then screen. he also watched that uh docu- that true crime documentary uh, about the killer. That was calling from the inside the house. Mm-hmm. And so that's what inspired them. That's what inspired the idea for that opening segment. Honestly, to me, I feel like if New Nightmare or Jason Lives weren't. Because I, I, I think. Jason Lives was so bad. I, I think Jason. <laughs> the thing with Jason Lives. so bad. People don't understand that that is a self referential movie. I get that, but I'm just it, like, people, what the fuck is people this? People don't understand that that's a meta movie that that movie is self-aware it, it knows that it's a horror movie it even winks at you maybe it, it was ahead of its horror. time it is that's 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 where i was going with yeah. that that's what people didn't understand that you know it's like that's why it's kind of not the most revered movie but it's not the most liked movie but people come around to that movie and say i recognize the genius behind this movie now yeah i guarantee you, if you watch it now with yeah. a different perspective Having watched New Nightmare and Scream, mm-hmm. you see Jason Lives kind of set that tone first. And I get that. Maybe I do have to revisit it because it's like, it's the same thing with Halloween 3. No one back then liked it because, oh, Michael's not in it. But no, if you watch it, you see how fucking genius Halloween 3 is. Yeah, and I you still know? have yet to see that movie. Oh but my that's, fucking God. That's, you, okay, I'm October? Saving that. I'm saving that October, for my 31 yeah. films. That's, that's like a must. That's, that my, is a that's must. my 31. That's in, We should do a whole thing on that because I, I visited up where it was shot. took forever and like I told you my story of just getting to that location. But I have photos. Where you almost died. I almost <laughs> died like three times. <laughs> and like... I took photos, though. Like, it was super fun. And like I said, as a kid, I hated Halloween 3 because Michael wasn't in it. And then I revisited and I'm like, this is fucking great. Like, they kill kids in this movie. This is fucked up. Hell and Tom yeah, Atkins, yeah. who's like the man. So... Throw me. Throw me. <laughs> Night of the Creeps. That is such a fucking awesome catchphrase. Throw me. Throw me. Boom. That should be on, like, your tombstone or something. <laughs> I'm going to start answering the phone like that. Throw me. me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we, we got to cover Halloween 3 because that's... 
That's no, another that's, thing. That's, that's on my thirty one. That's on my uh, thirty one films. So and, and I'm I, gonna do that. I do feel like behind the mask, it is. It does have its cult following now, and I do think it'll continue to have its cult following. Yeah, and for I, sure. You know, they also. I think it was last year they tried to self fund a sequel. Oh, which okay. didn't work. It was like Kickstarter. Yeah, it was like Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. And so they tried to fund a sequel. I don't know if they reached their goal or if they failed or not, but mm-hmm. I remember Scott Glashman saying, oh, the sequel's not going to happen, blah, blah, blah. But Fast now, forward to March of yeah. this year, there's a picture of them at the table I heard doing, about a that. Table, uh, doing a table reading. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, shit. But he looks so different. Like, have you seen what he looks like now? Yeah, I follow him on Twitter. And I was he like, looks oh. different. And so so I, was like, I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah. What happened to your hair, man? His hair's like gone. I don't know. But maybe they'll give him like a hair piece. Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe they'll try uh maybe they'll just go shave it and yeah, make a joke might out shave of it. The they might <laughs> shave it, yeah. It's like, hey, what happened to your hair? Uh it got burned off. <laughs> It'll play very well with it the will. story. It, it'll you know play, I mean? yeah. Because there's no way in hell his hair was fucking fire retardant. No. <laughs> his little, yeah, the whole fire retardant thing that he... <laughs> but yeah. But no, I, I like, I really, I do enjoy this movie. The first time I saw it, I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, but I was like young. I, I was 2006, so I was like in high school. Or no, I just graduated high school. But um, yeah, like I liked it. But now we're watching it, like I appreciate it more now. I think because I think it is such a horror fan film. A lot of people are starting to appreciate it, which I think is really great. Yeah, and it, it this is a fun movie to watch with friends as well. Oh like, hell yeah! Like, especially fun. especially genre fans. Yes. Like you yeah. watch this with like with genre fans, mm-hmm. like you know, we'll all be raking. Oh look at that! Look at that! There's a bunch of Easter eggs in this movie too, yeah. which is like pretty great. And you know how Pete like when people go annoying people go to the theater and they go, oh no, bitch, like run or she's gonna trip or she's. <laughs> This answers all those questions, so you don't have to say anything because yeah. it all does it for you, pretty much. It, it does, and then it, yeah. it, it invites you to do that too, which yes. is great. Yeah. Because again, like I was saying, this doesn't pander to its audience. It right. knows what it wants to be. Right. It never treats. It never insults your intelligence. It yeah. says like, "We know that you're an intelligent group, mm-hmm. but at the same time, we're gonna wink at you throughout this whole entire movie. So, yeah. are you gonna be able to keep up? Are you gonna keep up? And they answer everything. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And I really like the transformation i really like how they break down the final girl to me i yeah. thought that was great i thought that was really and cool and it explained a lot about the closets mm-hmm. the the hallways you know like yonic imagery and he was like breaking it down he's saying like you know the woman has to go through a physical pathway yeah. in order to be reborn yeah and that's something that I never understood. Oh, really? Yeah, I never got that before watching this movie. That's like, funny. I just always, I just thought like, oh, well, she's had enough. Yeah. I never understood, you know, how come they just didn't go in the closet? Mm-hmm. Or how come, why is she not fighting back yet? Mm-hmm. It wasn't until like I watched this movie and then I realized they have to, they have to go through it yeah. before to do that. They actually have to lose their innocence yeah. in order to be With someone... Survivor. To be a survivor. Because mm-hmm. that's the only way you can survive. Is yeah. by losing your innocence. And what's hilarious, I love the part where he's like going step by step. And he goes, oh, I shut, I nailed shut the... Uh, the windows? The first floor windows. But not the top because uh, obviously that's when they're going to break a window and come out on the top. And then they're going to land. And then... <laughs> but like the way he explains it though is so freaking funny. Like, yeah, this I, is so I, true. Cut all, I cut off all the big branches. You yeah. cut the small ones. So any weight will give. Any weight will give. <laughs> it's so hilarious how he like explains all that though. And so... And I also love when he like teases Taylor because yeah. then he make, he makes her feel uncomfortable yeah. with just one scene. He's all like, like she after she says that because I guess after the comic closet imagery, mm-hmm. like she's all so Leslie. It's safe to say that you're a pro life. <laughs> 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 and then and then he says something else, and he says anyway. So he goes on, and then he makes another thing, and then she says, "Oh, so you're pro life and a chauvinist." Yeah, yeah. And he's all, gotta respect it, okay? So just <laughs> relax. It's convention. Yeah. Just relax. And then she's all, and then he's all, look, when, uh, so this is what she does. She has to grab, and she kills me mm-hmm. with cock. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's true, though. And she's all, like, and she's like, <laughs> she's getting all, like, on. frustrated. No, yeah. I, mean, I think she got flustered, and she's like, she, that, cause I made it uncomfortable. Yeah. She's like, what? Yeah. And then she's all, and he puts his hand on her leg and he's like, Tay, it's okay. She kills me with cock. 
Yeah. She takes my manhood. My oh, manhood. That, and that's when she says that. She's like, oh, so you're a chauvinist and pro-life. Yeah. And then she's like, look, you don't got to like it. It's just convention. Mm-hmm. And she's like, she reaches for something phallic. No, she reaches for my cock. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though and it's funny because like he's all like think about it no survivor girl has ever killed a monster with a gun that's true newer what, ones what, they what do. A, what a pure what a, like what a can gun yeah you know like a shotgun or whatever then yeah except miss 45 well i don't know i don't know if you can count that as a slasher though she's a killer in it i don't know we're gonna have to have a discussion about what a slasher is. <laughs> well, I see your point, but yeah. Okay. Anyway, well, well, that's another topic. Yeah, we so can do that with revenge. I, I think that was a great revenge movie. Yeah. But so to me, I just felt like that was funny, and I and also that's another thing I didn't pick up on. What? Like you know, they always kill something. They kill those monsters with you know a knife or an axe or a bat. Yeah, or something like a cock shape. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, oh. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, again, you know, this movie helped me through the line. So now I'm watching all these slasher movies and I'm like, I'm thinking about everything. Yeah. Now. And you, know, you see as how well, it all adds up. Because I remember telling you before, <clears throat> I love slasher movies mm-hmm. and I never really gave much thought to them. Mm-hmm. I just loved how they were just killing. I just used it as just like, not like an outlet, but just like, remember how I was telling you I was, I, I, as a being a bully kid, I relate to the shape. Yeah. But just because he was just like murdering and all this, mm-hmm. all these kids, but I never thought about the actual science behind it. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh shit. So now I'm watching it and now I'm thinking about now every time I go into a slasher film, I'm always watching for either the survivor girl or the final guy mm-hmm. going through a passage. Yeah, and they do. And, and be reborn. It's like a baptism. It's like, yeah, being reborn. And so, like, you know, they're being baptized in blood. Yeah. And so, now I'm always looking for that now. Mm-hmm. Now every horror movie, I'm always just thinking about that. Like, it's oh, true. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because I never thought about like that. You know, as a horror... Like, I saw a Scream when I was young, but I was, I was so young when and I saw that. And that's such a psychological one, though. Yeah, but you I know? was so young when I saw that. I was like 15 Yeah, when I saw that movie. I couldn't appreciate what they were doing behind it. I can appreciate it now. Yeah. But back then, I didn't really appreciate it. I just, I just thought it was a scary movie. Yeah. But then you see the story and like, oh, this is fucked up. Like, they raped and killed my mom, for yeah. God's sakes. Like, so she's going through all that, you know. So that was, a Scream to me is just like a really heavy slasher. And yeah, it's fun, but the backstory with the rebirth Thing, that's a very heavy storyline. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... I don't know. I, I love this movie to me. This movie kind of changed the way that I've seen slasher mm-hmm. movies in general. Yeah. I completely love this movie. This movie's inspired uh, my boogeyman persona, <laughs> so to speak, yeah. along with Frank Zito. But this movie right here really kind of helped me, like... Not find my voice, but kind of helped me strike the way that I wanted to go because this was a movie that made me want to make a horror movie oh, that's or cool. made me want to write horror stories and stuff like that. So this was a movie that was like, I can do this. Like, yeah. I want to do this shit. Like, it inspired you. And so I was just like so creative because everything here was just like, like everything was fabricated because mm-hmm. he wasn't real. The legend wasn't real. Right. All that stuff wasn't real. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. I want to do something like this. Yeah. That'd be fucking cool. And then he's also inspired me to write a song. Mm-hmm. I actually, I was actually inspired to do a music video about oh. this because I had a, a song using clips from the movie. Oh, that'd be cool. And so I actually had the idea of having the boogeyman, mm-hmm. my boogeyman persona, and have like someone doing the interview just like Taylor. Oh, that'd be cool. And so, like, then I'd be doing my verses and stuff like that, and then during the hook, cuts to, like, the interview per- person breaking down the backstory. Mm-hmm. So I had that all written out, and I was like, this is fucking cool. I'm like, I can do this. Yeah. And so, um, I still I still might do that, but... You should. With, with like, copyright and, and the whole fandom thing, with the YouTube apocalypse. Yeah, I know. I don't know how well that's gonna play, know. you know what I mean? So, um... I do want to do that at, at some point. But yeah, yeah this movie did inspire me a lot and just made me appreciate the horror genre. Yeah. To me, as a horror fan, this was no better love letter 
than this movie. Yeah, to it's me, definitely this, a love letter. Yeah, this is a love letter to the horror genre yeah. and the community. And, mm-hmm. you know, and it's great that I could finally find someone to talk to about this because yeah. for six years, I couldn't talk to about it on my other podcast because no one saw it. No one has seen it. <laughs> I was yeah. like, and they're not, they're not horror fans. I'm like, Ugh. But I, I think even, like, non-horror fans would enjoy this, too. Yeah, like I said, I show two people yeah. that weren't horror fans, and they completely If you like comedy, it. you'll like this. It is smartly written. Yeah. And, and people will enjoy it. Yeah. You know? Are you, so you're excited for a sequel? Uh, Are you nervous or excited, or both? Maybe both, but yeah. I would have to get context because I want to read the comics first. <laughs> so I'm waiting for that sixth one to come out next month so I can mm-hmm. get all six of them and, and go through them mm-hmm. and see where they pick up the story. But other than that, you know, I am excited, but I am nervous. Yeah. Because you have such a legacy to live up to. Now. I know, and sequels are hard. But sequels maybe they'll are like hard. maybe that's gonna be like their focal point. And know? the thing is too, with sequels, is that you gotta break the rules. That's my only thing. Yeah. That horror movies tend to break the rules on sequels. Yeah. Yet most of them don't do that. Do that. Like, if you want, like, Scream 2. Yeah. Which I'm not a super fan of. Yeah, but, but, you know, they all, he also established, like, you know, no one is safe. Yeah, they fucking broke it with Randy, I'll tell you that. That pissed me off. And I honestly felt like Nev Campbell should have died in that one. Fuck no, Nev Campbell's the girl. She needed to die in that. No, no, no. How dare you say that? You take that back right now. Because, you know, her, her story... Should have ran its course right there. No. You can't do that to Nev. No. Yeah, you should No. Or maybe have her... Well, we'll talk about this off because then we're going to go on a whole <laughs> fucking tangent. But yeah, um, me, you know... So is this Bump in the Night improved or no? Oh yeah, definitely. Right, definitely. We, need to, we need to have like a hashtag or like a Photoshop. Hey, producer, you need to start doing that. She's gone. <laughs> She's gone. All right, um... But yeah, that's it. That's our so what's third your, movie. What's your rating on it though? Oh, uh, five Z's. Really? Yeah, it's five okay. Z's. I'll give I, it. I, I'll give it like a four Z, four out of five. Four out of five. Yeah. I take that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, again, it's when I saw it. Mm-hmm. It made a really it made a real impression on me. It yeah. influenced not only what I wanted to do, but it also influenced my music. Mm-hmm. And then I rewatched it last night, and I was like. Fuck, this movie still holds up. It does still hold up. But I, you know what I hope they do for the sequel, though? What? I hope they really, like, diss the remakes. Like, I hope they kind of work that in there somehow. Oh, that'd be good. Uh, because Scream 4 kind of tried doing that. You know, like, oh, everything's a remake these days, or everything is, like, an original. There's no originality anymore. So they were kind of, like, trying to remake everything. So I, I hope they kind of, like, dig into that. Maybe even prequels, too. Who knows? You know, Scream, you know, originally Scream 4, and uh, Sydney was supposed to be the killer. I know. And that, I kind of wish they did that. Because that, I think that would have, like, made the movie a little bit There was a lot of issues with Scream 4. Like, they didn't get script pages until the day of shooting. There's a lot of issues, but that's another Yeah, well, I think we would have, like, a, a Scream uh, podcast yeah. for sure. But we need to uh, do our our things, but where's our producer? Uh, uh, yeah. God damn it. I know. So, where'd you... So... As this movie, what do you what do you expect from the sequel? So for the sequel, I hope well because that's the thing I don't know if they are gonna go the prequel route, but I hope they do keep the uh, comedic tone, but it's not it's not so cheese ball. Like I hope they it's keep, the they, same cast and crew, so yeah. I'm pretty sure you know the, the tone's gonna be consistent. So I hope, I hope yeah. so. You know. So I want that consistency, and I want it to be where it is kind of like a dig at remakes and I want it to be very cleverly written in that in that sense and so does that make you nervous or excited I'm excited for, I'm actually really excited I, I I'm nervous because it's been so long since they've done the first one it's been like what 10 years 10 years yeah so that's a long time for a sequel so and I know if you take too long of a break sometimes it's stiff so I hope they kind of like take those omegas and loosen up those joints because you know, like I always think of it like, look at Full House. Like they, they did Fuller House, right? <laughs> not the same. It's very stiff. It's not like, even though it's the same crew and, or even though it's the same cast, it's not, I don't know. So like that's, I always worry about that when you they take such remember, a long time. They're all, I think what, I think what, what doesn't help is that all that, the, the cast, mm-hmm. they all kind of 
went their own way, and, and especially Jody Sweeten. Yeah. She kind of fell on hard times. She did, yeah. And, so, and Cameron kind of went like the Christian. Uh, is she a Christian? No, her brother is. Her brother, yeah. right? Okay, so, but you know, it's just like the dynamics not there anymore yeah. because they all grew apart. Yeah. So I feel that's why it doesn't work as well. Could be, but you know what I mean, though, right? Like if you take too long, sometimes it's like uh, I don't know. But I'm excited, though. I'm really curious to see. Yeah, Nathan Beasel is actually doing a lot more interviews on podcasts now, oh, which good. is good. So at first, he wasn't doing stuff like that. Yeah, he kind of didn't really... He didn't really show up. Yeah. So. Um, I'm, but I'm we're really ready excited. to do our next draw. So we don't have a hat right now, but if you want to just use it. Where is my hat? I don't have a hat. Do you have a hat with you? Oh, it's in a car. We can just do the hand shuffle. So this is going to be no. our last one, right? Oh, yeah. Last one. This is our last... Oh, Shuffle yeah, for you gotta dog remember, days you gotta summer. do your 31 films or your 15 films. Yeah, I need to just need to pick one more. But I've got 14. Yeah. Okay. I got I got mine. You got yours already? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is gonna be the last pick. I hope it's one of mine. Uh, it's yours. No, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's yours. What is it? What is it? Dun dun dun. And the movie is Night of the Comet. Yay! This is a fun movie. Have you seen it? No, I haven't oh seen it. Oh my this. god, it's such a fucking fun movie. Super 80s. All right, so let's see. Super uh, fun. What were the, the other Comet. movies? Yeah, what were the other ones? Laid to Rest. I haven't seen that. The Hills Run Red. I haven't seen that one either. Those sound like newer movies. Your favorite. I can't you want to announce that one? Uh, all the, all the sh dildos love Mandy Wayne. <laughs> you want to call them dildos because they're not real enough to be dildos. What did I just watch recently where they just sang dildos, dildos? Oh my god, it was so fucking funny. What was it? And then Pin. Oh, Pin. Pin that's a good one. I heard that's that was mine. great. Yeah, that's a really underrated movie. Super underrated. Oh, well. So, uh, Hills Run Red, Late to Rest. Uh, well, I haven't seen those. Those are great fucking Are movies. they newer, though? Yeah, they sound newer. Yeah, they're, they're about new. About 2008, nine. Okay. But Night of the Comet, I don't know where it's streaming. It used to be on Amazon. They take things off, man. Come on. They take things off. I can't. Oh, my God. It might be on Shutter. It might be on Shutter, but I don't know. They take things off. I can't control what the media does. What did I tell you? I can't control it. You can probably what get it on YouTube, Amazon. What did I tell Amazon. you? Man, you're, you're, you're like the producer. You don't follow the fucking Oh, my rules. God. They take things <laughs> off. It's not my fault. Um, but it has way more easy access now. Like, back then, you couldn't even find Night of the Comet. Uh, but I'm excited to watch that. I love that movie so much. It's super fun. Super fun one-liners, too. No, it's not on Shutter. They took it off? It's, it's on Amazon. And YouTube. Is it on YouTube? Yeah, that's the last time I watched it was on YouTube. Good old YouTube. 1984. Mm-hmm. 1984 was a good year. Prime Video, four ninety nine. Okay. All right, so that's uh, so next week we'll wrap up our Dog Days of Dog Days of Summer series uh, with Night of the Comet. And after that, oh man, we're going to have a fun time because we are doing a 31 films. That's so many. That's, uh, yeah. I, so we're I, doing 15 each. 15 each, yeah. I've got 14 right now. I got 31 already. Well, because I mean, there's so many, but I like to stick with the Halloween theme yeah. when I do these. Which we'll talk about a little yeah, bit later. Yeah, we'll but, talk about um, that later, but. Uh, I, I do, uh. I do have 31. I will start posting some of them on our Instagram. Okay. Uh, because when we start, it be the second week of October. Mm hmm And so um, I'm going to start posting the first five or so. So okay. if you got if you got some you want to okay. send my way, I'll post them up. Or if you want to post. I'll post them, yeah. I'm going to do that. Um, other than that, man, uh, I'm Johnny Zuko. And I'm Elisa. Thanks for listening, everybody. Oh my god, really? Like what? that was terrible. I'm like that beer is hitting me right now. <laughs> I'm right? Elisa. And it must be like uh, three o'clock because my energy. Yeah, it's almost three. Oh my, god. my energy level goes. <laughs> Especially since it's fucking hot outside. Too. It is. It's like ninety degrees. It's like yeah. we're suffocating in the crypt. I know. In the crypt right here. It is a crypt. Crypt.
Crypt Keeper. All right, so Johnny Zuko for Elisa. We are out. Stay scary. Stay scary. Bye. Bye. Bye.